If you are a landscape photographer who uses Lightroom, then you're gonna love this video because in the next five minutes, I'm gonna show you my favorite way to add depth, dimension, and interest to my landscapes without looking fake or over-processed. Now, I see many photographers making a big mistake by simply adding more contrast with the contrast slider. In order to make that detail stand out, which would seem like the right way to make your image seem more engaging, but that's probably the worst thing you can do to your RAW file. So instead, I'm gonna show you right now a more professional and powerful way to take that boring RAW file and add instant interest without damaging your photo. That's the key here. So let's jump over to Lightroom and I'll show you how all this works. When you bring your RAW file into Lightroom, usually it's a very lackluster representation of what you saw in the field. It's a bit flat, boring. The histogram is kind of bunched up in the middle here. Now, the beauty of RAW format is that it actually absorbs or captures more color, more detail, and more texture than JPEG format. However, that detail is now hidden in the RAW file. It's embedded. And it's up to us to use programs like Lightroom here to bring that detail out. Right now, it's a diamond in the rough, and we have to chisel away in order to bring out its full potential. So right now, I'm working with a black and white image because it's just easier to visualize how this works without the added complication of color. So what is the most straightforward way to add interest in depth? Well, one way is to add contrast because eyes are naturally drawn to those high contrast areas. So let's do that now with the contrast slider. Jump over here to the basic panel, take the contrast, and pump it all the way up to 100. Now, if we do a quick before and after here, the photograph definitely looks more interesting. The eyes are definitely drawn to it more. However, there's a big problem here. We've deepened the shadows, we've brightened the highlights, and removed that flat look to it. But if we zoom in and take a close look at the image here, let's focus on this shadow right in here. So this is with the added contrast, but when we go back to the original RAW file, there's actually more texture, there's more variation in this shadow. There's some darker grays right here, a few darker grays here. This is what we call micro contrast, and it's a very small area of your photograph that has varying degrees of lightness. But when we add contrast to the entire photograph, now it's just a big blotch of black. So you're chipping away at the detail in your image. And if we zoom back out to fit and take a look at either the tonal sphere or the value scale, when we jump back to the original image, notice how this seems to be more gray pixels in this tonal sphere. This is the before, the raw file, and here's the after. Before the contrast, after the contrast. So when you add contrast, what you're doing, you are polarizing the lightness value of your pixels. In other words, we're telling Lightroom, okay, we need to take those gray pixels in the middle here, our midtones, and push them in one direction or the other. So when we add that contrast, notice how this gray area is less and there's more brighter whites and more darker shadows. And in the process of doing this, we are damaging our photo because we are removing texture and detail. Now, don't get me wrong, removing texture and detail, that's not a problem. Because in order to make our images more visually appealing, we usually do need to add some contrast. So we do have to sacrifice some texture and detail. That's the trade-off here. Because otherwise, all of our images would be pretty flat and boring without that added interest from the contrast. So it's up to you, though, to determine what is the acceptable balance with that trade-off. But here is when we run into problems. When we use a contrast slider here to do this, it's a brute force adjustment, meaning all the pixels in the image are gonna be pushed darker and lighter, including pixels that are already on the threshold of being damaged. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's zoom back into that shadow we were looking at earlier. This shadow area right here, let's turn off the contrast, go back to the original image. Notice how these darker gray pixels, they're almost pure black. They're only a few points away from being up against the left-hand side of the histogram. So when we add that contrast globally, like we did with the contrast slider, we are taking those very dark gray pixels and making them the same value as the pure black pixels they are adjacent to. So now, here's the original, I have a little bit of texture in that shadow. Here's the after, and now it's just a blotch of black. And the same thing happens with your brightest highlights. If we go to this area right here, we can see that we have some highlights in the snow on the tree branch. This is the original. You can see there are some very light gray pixels right around the brightest highlights, giving the snow a little more depth and texture. When we bring back that full contrast blast, we can see that now they're just blotches of white. 
So the point here being, when we add contrast globally, we are pushing those borderline pixels over the edge and we either crush the shadows or blow out the highlights. Destroying pixels in the process, which means you are removing detail and removing texture from your image. So what do we do about this? Instead of adding the same amount of contrast to all of your pixels, we're going to group our pixels together by lightness value, specifically highlights, shadows, and midtones. So we're gonna put those pixels into three separate buckets, so to speak, and that will allow us to adjust them independently, which gives us more control over how far those pixels are being pushed and prevents them from being over or underexposed. So to do this, the first step is, well, let's first create a virtual copy so we can compare the difference. And we set our contrast, so we're back to the original RAW file. And let's go down to the white slider. This will control our highlights, which we can see up in the histogram here. When I hover over whites, notice how a little gray box appears on the right-hand side of the histogram telling you these are the tones you are going to adjust with this slider. So hold down the Alt or Option key, then click and hold the white slider, and let's just push it to the right. And this overlay here will tell us, or rather show us, if we are overexposing any of our whites. And right now we're not. Only in the tonal sphere, because that has the full tonal range, but the image doesn't have a lot of bright highlights or deep shadows. So we can pump this all the way up to 100, do a quick before and after. Matt's done a really great job at brightening the image up. And it's okay if only a few pixels are clipped in the image here, because no one's gonna notice that. Just avoid big blotches of overexposed areas. Now, let's repeat the same step for the blacks, which control our shadows. Hold down your Alt or Option key, click and hold the black slider, and let's pop this down to the left. And now we are beginning to see some areas are being crushed. They're too underexposed. So we can scale back on this. Like I said, you don't have to remove all of the clip detail, but just avoid any big blotchy areas. So minus 40 seems to be a good place to settle. Quick before and after, before the whites and blacks, and here's after the white and black adjustment. So this process is called setting your white and black points, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You are lightening your highlights as far as they will go and deepening your shadows as far as they will go before you start to damage your photograph. And notice here that each slider is adjusted by a different amount. Our whites are all the way up to 100 and our blacks are at negative 41, which is why it's so important to make local adjustments like this because each group of tones, your highlight shadows and midtones, they're going to require a different amount because if we brought the blacks all the way down to negative 100, so the same amount as our whites, we have some pretty big areas of damaged shadows. And this doesn't look good anymore, but when we change that back to negative 41, we have a much cleaner image. Now, speaking of the midtones, let's adjust those with the exposure slider up here. This is going to adjust the majority of your midtones as shown up in the histogram. So let's move this around until we see something pleasing. Well, it's like negative 30 seems to be a good place to settle here. Quick before and after. Here's the original image, and here is the after. So it's a very light contrast adjustment, but it's a much higher quality compared to just using the contrast slider here. So this is the contrast slider full blast, and here is a more considerate, deliberate contrast adjustment with our whites, blacks, and exposure slider. So that is one way to add contrast to your photographs non-destructively. It gives them instant drama and interest without damaging the photograph. You're protecting those pixels because you are now in full control of how far you're gonna push that contrast. You control the quality now, and that is what makes this method so powerful. It's that you retain the ability to isolate the exact pixels you want to adjust. Highlights, midtones, and shadows. And that's not to say that the contrast slider is complete rubbish. There are instances where it works great, but that's a topic for another video. The takeaway point here is that adding contrast globally rarely works out because there are so many different lightness values across your entire frame. Now, the second way to do this is to take this adjustment one step further and add it to a mask using the masking panel. And let me tell you, since masking has come to Lightroom, it's completely changed the way I process my photographs. It's just absolutely incredible. And that's why I put together a completely free online course that dives deep into everything you need to know about masking in Lightroom. And at this point, there's about 3,000 photographers who have already gone through this course, and all the feedback I've gotten from them, they say that it's the best course on masking they've seen. So I'll put a link at the end of this video. We can go and download it for free.
But first, I want to show you how masking can help you with adding contrast. Now, at this point, I think I've gone well over the five minute mark. So thanks for sticking with me. It'll be worth it. Trust me. All right, so let's jump back to the desktop and I'll show you this really quickly. Okay, so in the previous adjustment, we added local contrast with the whites, blacks, and exposure sliders. Great. However, that affects every pixel in the image that Lightroom identifies as being a highlight, a shadow, or a midtone. So let's say I only want to add a contrast boost to this cabin here, the foreground, in order to make the image appear more three-dimensional. As I mentioned earlier, areas of high contrast attract the eyes, but it also helps to separate the subject from the background. So adding contrast to just this cabin here will enhance the perceived depth, which is really important here because I use a long lens, which will flatten the perspective. So I wanna make that cabin stand out from the background. So let's set up our mask here. I'm gonna to go to the masking panel. I'm going to add a radial gradient, draw a radial around this cabin here and turn off the overlay so we can actually see what we are doing here. Now, don't worry about the exact steps I'm taking here with the mask. I explain it all in the free masking course. So for now, just want you to focus on the result. So now that I have the mask environment set up properly, let's make the same exact adjustment. We're going to set our white point, which was all the way up to plus 100. Blacks are gonna go down to negative 41. And the exposure, I believe, I think we did negative 0.30 for the whole photo, but for this cabin here, I'm probably keep it exactly where it is. And looking at the image, this doesn't look too natural, so I'm going to increase that feathering to soften the result. And do a quick before and after. It's before the contrast, and here is the after. Notice how much more interesting that image is just by making that cabin stand out more from the background. And the best part is that it's entirely restricted to the cabin without having to do any extra cleanup work. The masking panel took care of all of that automatically. Now, this is not something I would typically do to this image. I'd also be adding contrast to the sky as well as some dodge and burning in order to bring out those clouds. But the bigger point I wanna make here is that the quality and simplicity. That's very important too, by the way, how simple your workflow is. Both the quality and simplicity is dependent on how well you can isolate the area you want to adjust. And that becomes exponentially easier with the masking panel. And I know how important this is, so that's why I put together that free course I mentioned earlier. It's called Lightroom Behind the Mask, and you can download your copy completely free by visiting the link up in the description for this video, and I'm sure there's a button around here somewhere. It's no strings attached, 100% complimentary. Just sign up with your email, and I'll send it right over to you. All right, I hope you enjoyed these Lightroom tips, and make sure to sign up for that free course, and I will see you in the next video.